Hi, this is Henry Egloff, and I'm going to show you how to rotate multiple objects around a central point using Blender. So this is a fairly basic technique, but I think that it can be quite effective. I've used it to create animations like this one, or this one. And before I forget, I have written down all the steps for this technique into a written tutorial with screen captures and I will include a link to this tutorial in the YouTube description. So the first thing I will do is demonstrate the basic technique. So I'm going to start with a new Blender document. I'm going to move the cube to the side. I'm going to add a mesh sphere and move that to the other side. And then I'm going to add a empty object, in this case the plane axis option, to the center of the 3D space. Now, if I hold down the command key on the keyboard or the control key if you're on Windows, in the scene inspector, I'm going to click on the cube, the sphere, and then the empty object last. It's important to select the empty object last. Then I'm going to move the cursor over the 3D viewport area. And on the keyboard, I'm going to type command P or control P if you're on Windows and then I'm going to select set parent to object. Now in the scene inspector if I click the little drop down next to the empty object I can see that the sphere and the cube have been parented to the empty object. So this means the cube and the sphere will inherit properties that are applied to the empty object. So if I move the cursor over the 3D viewport area and press N on the keyboard and I've still got the empty object selected. If I rotate the empty object, you will see that the cube and the sphere rotate relative to the empty object. So that is the basic technique, and that might be enough for you. If you would like to learn how to rotate the objects in a seamless animation loop, keep watching. So I'm going to create another new Blender document and the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the position of the camera. So I'm going to click on the camera object, roll the cursor over the 3D viewport area and press N on the keyboard. And I'm going to set the X location of the camera to zero, the Z location to zero. I'll set the Z rotation to zero and the X rotation to 90. So this is a simple little formula that I use a lot and it basically just means that the camera is pointing directly at the center of the 3D space. So if I click on the little camera icon, you can see that I'm looking straight at the cube and straight at the 0, 0, 0 point. I'm going to step back a little bit, so I will set the Y location to minus 20. So I will select the cube object and I'm going to move it to the location of X3 and I'm going to add a mesh torus and move that to the X location of negative 3 and I will rotate the torus 90 degrees on the X axis and I will set the shading to smooth. Now I'll add the empty object to the center holding down the command key or control key if you're on Windows, click on the cube, click on the torus and click on the empty object last, roll the cursor over the 3D viewport area and on the keyboard I'm going to type command P or control P if you're on Windows and I'm going to select set parent to object. Now I'm going to set up the animation. So the first thing that I like to do is set the frame rate to 30 frames per second in the output properties and I'm going to create a three second animation so that means I want to finish on frame 90 so I'm going to set the end frame to 90. Now I'm going to click on the little record button to record properties for the keyframes it's important that you don't miss this step and then with the cursor over the 3D viewport area I'm going to press I on the keyboard and select to insert the keyframe for rotation. Then I'm going to move to the end of the animation sequence and do the same thing 
press I on the keyboard and insert another keyframe for rotation. And so now I'm going to set the Z rotation to 360 degrees. So now you can see that my objects are rotating around the central point and I'm just going to press spacebar on the keyboard to preview the animation. So you will notice how the animation appears to slowly speed up at the start and slow down at the end and that is because Blender by default applies a more natural motion to the animation sequence. So I'm going to go into the dope sheet and go into channel extrapolation mode and select linear extrapolation. And so now if I press the space bar key to preview the animation you can see that the rotation is happening at a linear speed. And what I will do is I'm going to click on the torus object to select it and I will do I'll move the move to the end of the timeline and I will rotate the torus 360 degrees. So now you can see that the torus is spinning around while it's spinning around the central point and you can see that the first frame and the last frame are the same. Incidentally the torus appears to rotate more than once and that is because the torus appears to be the same from the front and the back. So the main thing here is that I need to make sure that the first and the last frames are the same. So I, if I wanted to rotate the torus twice I could set it to 720 degrees or in this case I could even set it to 180 degrees just as long as the first frame and the last frame are the same so that's pretty much it one other consideration is that because the first frame and the last frame are the same if you export this animation sequence as it is you're essentially repeating the first and the last frame which can cause an ever so slight pause as the sequences kind of connect with each other so there are two easy ways around this what I tend to do is export my animations as a sequence of PNG images and then I bring them into a program like After Effects to compile them and render them to video. So all I need to do in that case is just not include either the first or the last frame because really I want my sequence to move to the second last frame and then back to the first frame so that every frame in the sequence is different. If you prefer to export your animation directly from Blender as a video sequence, what I would advise you to do is just um, change the parameters of the animation sequence to just be one frame less. So in this case I would set it to 89 and I would make sure that I left that keyframe there. So that's pretty much it. If you like this tutorial you might want to have a look at my YouTube channel because I've got a bunch of other Blender tutorials there. Um, you also might want to have a, have a look around my website. I've got a tutorial section in my website where I've got a bunch of tutorials that I haven't made video tutorials for um, including some Unity game development tutorials and app development and coding tutorials. And if you really like this tutorial and you like my tutorials in general, I would be really stoked if you would consider offering me a small donation as a sign of your support and appreciation. So I will include a link to my Buy Me A Coffee profile in the YouTube description. Thank you. Bye.